Good morning. Now we're going to go over Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. So let's go. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Fasting is meaningless if it's done merely from habit and if it doesn't derive from a deep concern over some spiritual need. And as we saw yesterday, even the best and most foundation spiritual practices, if not done with sincere motives and right purposes, are only hypocritical and pretentious. Jesus was obviously referring to the crucifixion. When he said he would be taken away from the disciples, from that time on, it would be fitting to fast and mourn. Fasting naturally comes from a broken and mourning heart. But if performed by shallow, mechanical ritual only, it is displeasing to God. Jesus' emphasis on internal matters such as forgiveness shows us that fasting must be held in the proper context. Of what's truly important, it also demonstrates that he brought us radically different teachings and practices from those of traditional Judaism or any other religious traditions, Catholicism, liberal Protestantism, any sects and cults that can stress eternism, ritualism, or any man-centered habits. When we fast, Jesus wants us to do it in the light of his new covenant, not his old covenant. It has forms and shadows in a way that increases our compassion for others, causes us to be more humble and sacrificial and gives him all the praise and glory. Now, are there other ways to fast besides abstaining from food? In what other ways could you experience the spiritual benefits of fasting, the clarity of communication with God the taming of selfish desires, the renewal of priorities. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.